So welcome to the lovely junction here in the area of South Park Crescent where a lot of buses pass through. So it's kind of obvious that I should start today's bus hopping journey here in this location as I show you the different features of the brilliant London Bus Power app. And obviously I reached out to the owner of the app to ask him how the idea came about and how the app still runs today. The source information, the main countdown information, is literally the exact same source data that you see on the countdown boards. The bus enthusiast side of it is something that I've focused on quite a bit in the last few years. What are some of those ideas that you want to incorporate into the app in the future? Is there something that you could spoil for us or is that, is that top secret? I met up online with Peter Mulder. Sorry, I, I, I just have Bangkok in the background. A software engineer who just happens to run the London Bus Pal app. So as I wait for my bus, which is arriving in just about four minutes, I'm going to go ahead and download the London Bus Pal app. So I'm just going to reinstall it here. And it downloads pretty quickly. It's from Mulder Digital. And it, on the chart, it's number 200 in navigation. So we can just see here, fantastic reviews. 4.5 out of 5, 238 ratings, and yeah, generally quite quite good feedback about the app. So you do take in a lot of feedback from people who use the app to make sure that Absolutely. it's working at its absolute best. Yeah, I think it's, it's, and it's one of the things I've started doing really in the last two, three years where I've really, really taken people's feedback into account, um, you know, just talking through things, trying to understand, you know, what will work for people. This is what 80% of people want. That's where I should focus. This is what one person wants. You know, maybe it's not the best idea. I have done that. Someone approached me and said, can you please just do something like LVF, but, you know, just make it mobile friendly. It's so frustrating. I'm out there and I want to, you know, see more information and I just can't, I can't do it. And, you know, that's where some of the features came from was, okay, you know, people love LVF. How can I, how can I make that in a mobile friendly way? So LVF is very prominent on the app. So you can literally just go into search for anything and you can either search up a bus route and then find the specific buses. So I'll go onto the 145 and I can go into information. I see the route, I see comments, and I can also see every single bus that's in service or has been in service. And so this specific bus is LX12DGU. And when I type that up, it comes up and I can see exactly where it is and what time it's going to arrive at Haynott Street, where we're getting off to change onto another bus. It's, it's so much fun to be able to see your own photos of a bus. Like yesterday, I went out to take photos of the fog because there was a fog in London and I took photos of some buses and very happy with the result and the fact that I have the ability to put it up on the app and for other people to see it. I think that's that's great. That's awesome. I need more photos in the, in the app. I can easily take a lovely photo of this 145 bus. And then if I want to, and it's good enough, which it isn't because I just took it a second ago, I can upload my very own photo of this specific bus, type where the location is, which is Ilford, Hainault Street. And I can add a comment as well. Very beautiful bus. No one does that anyways. And then I click save. And what it does here is it does lots of AI background tasks where it scans the photo to see if it is a bus and to see if it can be uploaded, if it's good enough quality. The app used to have all, all the photos pulled in from, from Flickr, um, but I had a bit of an incident where um, Flickr didn't quite filter you know, didn't filter the way that they're supposed to for safe searching. Um, and I was like, no, I'm going to have to just remove Flickr completely um, and bring all the photos into into the app myself um, because I can keep people safe. And, and it's always at the most inopportune time, you know, it's like I'm busy or I need to go somewhere or do something and, and I open it and I'm like, oh, oh, now there's a baboon. Now what do I do? Then there is also a specific vehicle yeah, info to do with the actual model of bus where it says how old it is, what the fleet number is, who operates it, what the wrap is and the engines and the chassis 
and the body and the engine type and how many doors it has. So very specific, very handy. So the initial app, when was when was that created? I created it in 2013. I used to work in Leicester Square. Um, and I used to take the, the train into Waterloo. And then I usually just walk walk across the bridge from Waterloo up to Leicester Square. It was always really, really amazing. Um, and then my company moved to Angel. If you know the tube map, it's the worst. For me, it's the two worst places to get between in central London. Um, so I decided, okay, let's try and take a bus and see what happens. Um, I took the bus. I There was a bus app at the time, but it was quite frustrating. It, it kind of showed when the next bus was, but it didn't really help too much. Um, TFL had their little mobile website at the time, which also had some countdown information. Um, so I used that. I was a hobbyist programmer. So that's what I was doing in my spare time. And I was like, I'm sure I can do something. I'm sure I can make an, let's try and make an app. Never made an app before. I spent a few weekends and a few nights and I was on the bus and the app was working and it was like, okay, this is great. This is amazing. It's like, this is exactly what I wanted. It's, it's, it's better than what's out there. Um, and then I was like, okay, now I want to play around and see how do I publish this app? How do I get it on the Play Store? It was it was specifically made for Android at the time. In 2019, I came across a new framework called Flutter. That's uh, it's a Google product, um, and it allows you to create um, the same app for Android, for iOS, for web, for Windows, for Mac OS, um, anything that you want. So I spent about two months rewriting the app again that's that was then version four um, and that's the current version that you see is uh, I would say about 60 percent of it but the heart of it is still what I did in 2019 all of the work that I did it was in November November and December 2019 I spent my entire I took leave over Christmas I was working full-time and I spent every waking hour just like just making making most of what there is today and um, but then you know as things kind of change and as new new buses come online i now rely more on on user users to supply that information okay so we've just ended up in gats hill for no reason whatsoever and i want to show you one more feature which is called bus lists and that is where we can see rare workings directly on the app uh, so we can see that obviously there aren't any nearby, but we can see where some new buses have been put in service. And you can see a list of every single bus in London. So what in the world? What in the world? That's so long, every single bus, and there are thousands of them. So it could just go forever, but you can put in a filter such as what operator it is and whether it's active, inactive, and yeah, all sorts of other things as well. Um, and there's a few, I, I think there's probably about 20 to 30 users who constantly, you know, just keep things up to date and, and, and sort of just help with that. So about those users, how many users are there mm -hmm. on the London Bus Pal app? Um, so installations is about 80,000, about 80,000 installations live. Um, of those, it's about 40,000 people that use it at least once per month. Mm -hmm. Um, and then currently it's sitting on about 14,000 users a day. That's all kind of linked to TFL's, well, TFL has to comply with the Freedom of Information Act. So I'm guessing that's what really enabled you and allowed you to, start this app and be able to have it like fully operational to the point where information is just incredibly accurate so so it's mostly from tfl tfl is, were quite well they've been quite good and you know they 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 opened up all of, a lot of their data i think oyster data for example like payment data you can't get access to um but they opened up all their data so app developers can get access to some of the information the rest of it is mostly crowd I, I, i'd call it crowdsourced so it's from users who submitted and um, it goes through a process and then you know we kind of approve or, or reject it and it's kind of just been building up over the years i think it's it's pretty accurate um i think about probably two years ago it was it was very patchy 
it needs more work. I need more, I need more feedback from people to say, Hey, you know, this is how I want to do this. You know, this is sometimes when I go out, you know, this is what I write down. Can I put that in an app? I was playing around and you can change the color scheme. And then someone asked me to add green. If it takes me 10 or 20 minutes, that's fine. It's okay. So that bus that's just dropped us off here is red, but if you go into the settings of this app, you can customize a lot of things, including the color scheme. So despite London buses generally being red, you can actually change the color scheme to colors like blue, purple, and green. I think I'm gonna keep it on purple because I really like the color purple. In fact, it's my favorite color. Other things that you can customize here in the settings is you can enable enthusiast mode, which adds additional functionality for bus enthusiasts. And it's experimental, but still will probably be very useful. I bet you've heard about the recent TFL cyber attack that's happened. Has that, has that affected the app in any way or was that, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so in the beginning, it didn't affect the app too badly. Um, the bus information and, and countdown um, was one of the few things that were not impacted. When I say countdown, I'm referring to that's that's the main TFL source for the countdown screens. Yeah. It's called countdown. Um, but what sort of happened is technical support is a lot slower because they focus on resolving that issue. Um, What's also now started happening is as bus routes have updated, not all of the schedules are loaded. And when the schedules aren't loaded, countdown doesn't update. So there's a few routes that don't update. Um, so I see that in the app reviews quite frequently, you know, people complaining, you know, this route isn't updated or I, I can't see this. Um, and unfortunately, it is due to the TFL cyber, cyber attack. I don't have numbers at hand, but I would, I think it's about 95% of the data is there. It's only about 5% that's not, not showing at the moment. I'd like to pause the interview for just one second so that I can thank all of my lovely channel members who are scrolling on screen right now to get super early access to my videos, get a badge next to your username in the comment section and get your name onto this list. There are two join buttons on my channel homepage and underneath this video so that you can do so. Thanks guys. I am starting to work on version five and some of that is to, um, you know, add more information about bus features, for example. So uh, USB ports, what bus garages um, about, or what bus garage a, a bus is allocated to, and more information about routes. So similar to the way that you can get that for buses, the same thing for routes. I want to... I don't want to make any promises, um, but I think it would be really um, important to also start incorporating other modes of transport in London. I know it's called London Bus Pearl, um, but you know, it's it's a bit, some people use more than buses and, and it, it's a shame to kind of have to send someone to another app to kind of get the same information that I, I can give people. Um, but it's just about, it's a fine balance because for me, always the key with London Bus Spell was it should be very, very simple to use. Yeah. Um, now, when you start, you know, when you start adding tube and trams and other other modes of transport, you're going to complicate things. So it's a fine balance, but I'll get there with with good design. We can, yeah, can do it. yeah. I'm I'm sure you'll be able to work it out. And I think that integration is definitely something that that your users would love to be able to just use your app for all of their travel information that they need. So I think that would definitely, definitely boost yep. usage of the app. So that is my use case for the London Bus Power app and a little bit of an insight into how the app operates and of course, how it came about. So many, many thanks to Peter Mulder for the amazing opportunity. And hopefully by watching the video, you've found out a little bit more about the different functions of the app. So join in with the fun, download the London Bus Power app. There's a link in the description to the London Bus Power app's website. And thanks for watching. Have a good day, press subscribe. Bye-bye.